So the duty to care really talks about how responsible someone is towards others who use their service. For example, we could talk about a parking lot. If you just park at Walmart, what responsibility does Walmart really have towards you keeping your car safe? Or towards Walmart keeping your car safe? A lot of times we see signs in parking lots of malls or Walmart that might say something like this, park at your own risk. <clears throat> you assume all risk for parking here. But what about if you park at a parking lot where you pay to park in big cities? They may not have signs up saying park at your own risk, and you are paying them, which implies a level of responsibility that they have to actually care for your vehicle. If you take it a step farther and you have a party at your house inviting people over, and you have people parking in your driveway, again, you don't have signs up saying parking at your own risk. You have a higher level of caring about those people's vehicles that are parked there. And at the highest level of caring would be a valet parking situation. In that case, the people parking are allowing the valet service to drive their car, and they're expecting a certain amount of caring for their vehicles. Absolutely. In that situation. So if we think about something on another level of private carriage, <clears throat> this can be arranged between two people. So for example, your friend has a computer uh, that needs to be fixed and you agree to take it to Best Buy to have it looked at by Geek Squad for your friend. <clears throat> that would be, if you have absolutely no reward, that would be gratuitous private carriage. Or if your friend pays you, that might be a private carriage for hire situation. It's just arranged between you and your friend. You're not asking that you take lots of people's computers to get fixed or anything like that. It's just private arrangement between two people. Now the difference when we look about public carriage is that implies that the, that the uh, entity is willing to deal with a lot of people and that implies that they have a high level of caring for taking care of those people. Uh, this could be gratuitous public carriage or for hire. So you may think of, well, why would anyone transport people for free with, for gratuitous public carriage? Well, if you have, let's say, a fishing resort way far north in Canada, and you've got people that you want to get up there so they can do a fishing package and have a great week in their summer fishing, you may include the airline trip up to your fishing lodge it's in Canada as part of the package deal. Or you may be a casino and you want to bring people into that casino, especially people who have been uh, have a track record of spending a lot of money at your casino. Well, you may include that. And we have definitely examples uh, in the United States of different casino operators, including airfare, to their casino or an airport near their casino with a vacation package or just for free for a high roller type of person. So there are definitely gratuitous public carriage examples out there, although most of the time we are looking at for higher public carriage, which is uh, the level of a common carrier. So if you are undertaking that you're going to carry all people or cargo that comes to you, as long as there is room, then that is a common carrier. And what does it really matter? What it really matters is liability. Liability is really important. So for common carriage, you are assuming liability to get whatever it is, where it's going, safely. And that person operating that company has a very high duty to care and has a very high duty to protect those people that it's endeavoring to move or take somewhere, protect those people from harm.